Hey guys and welcome to East Co Brewing and tonight we are going to get a little bit more advanced and we are doing a Brewer's Best New England IPA. It's going to be awesome. Now this brew day that we're doing today takes a little bit more uh, time I guess you could say and a little bit more due diligence than what you've probably used to seeing on the channel. We're used to doing just like basically can extract, you know, some sugars, maybe some hops put it in, mix it up, bottle it, drink it, right? No, nope, we're gonna be doing a little bit different. We're gonna be using some specialty grains, some flaked oats, nine ounces of hops. Yeah, I know, it's gonna be pretty crazy. We're gonna be using some uh, corn sugar. We're gonna be doing liquid malt extract. Now this is not hopped, it's not pre-hopped, it's just liquid malt extract. We're gonna be doing a boil. Anyway, so the New England IPA, this is one that I've never done before and I'm looking forward to trying it out. So we're gonna get started here right away. First thing I've done, sanitized all my equipment with Star Sand. Good idea to always have around is a spray bottle full of Star Sand, especially when you're doing the you know partial extracts or a full, full green uh, brew because you're gonna be utilizing a lot of different utensils and uh, you may set them down or whatever, but if you pick it up and you gotta use it, you just give it a spray with Star Sand, you're good to go. So yeah, nine ounces of hops. We got three ounces of Cascade, we got two ounces of Centennial, two ounces of Chinook, and two ounces of Columbus. So it's gonna be pretty uh, pretty awesome. We're gonna be doing a boil with uh, different hop additions, and we're gonna be doing a Whirlpool uh, hop addition as well. I'll show you guys what that's all about, steeping our grains. And then, through the, the whole process of this, we're also gonna be doing some dry hopping as well. So uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on. So. First thing we got to do to get started is we are going to boil, not boil, we're going to bring three liters of water up to 155 degrees and we're going to get our grains ready and we're going to start steeping our grains. All right, I'll meet you guys over at the stove. All right, while we're waiting for that water to boil, we got to have ourselves a home brew. This is an amber ale that I brewed a little while back. But you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna get our grains ready to go. So we've got our grain bag that comes with this kit. So we're gonna put all our grains in here so we can steep them. Now a little trick, grab a bowl and put your grain bag in there and then just take the edges of it, put it around the bowl, push it down. It makes it way easier to get your grains in. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got our flaked oats. Ah. Scissors, star sand. There you go. I mean, some people might be a little too bent up about sanitization, but you know, it's pretty important. But we're gonna be boiling all this stuff anyway, so. All right, there's our flaked oats. And then we've got six ounces of crushed pale malt. So that's the nice thing about these Brewer Best kits is they actually crush the uh, grains for you before they send them to you. All right, get that in there. 12. All that goodness. Then all you got to do is uh, take this off like that, work them all the way down to the bottom, and then you just tie the top here, just in a knot, because you want them to be loose within the bag so that you can steep them. There you go, and now they're ready to go for steeping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the stove and see if we're at uh, 155 degrees is what we're going to be starting at here. Okay. Okay, we are at 155 degrees, so we're going to drop our greens in now. Now the temperature is going to drop when we put these in. And you know, you just take the, you just hang this over the side, and you're good to go. Now, I'm just going to grab my spoon here. Just kind of want to move them around a bit in there. I know you guys can't really see that very good. There you go, a little bit better. Kind of just move them around. Now here's the thing, guys. We're going to actually be steeping these for 45 minutes. And you want to keep a consistent temperature around uh, 148 
to 152. So we're going to be monitoring this as as we uh, do the 45 minutes to keep that temperature. You have to turn the burner on and off a little bit once in a while, but we're just going to keep doing that. And so we'll be back after 45 minutes to show you our next step. Okay, it's been 45 minutes since we started steeping these grains and now it's time to strain them. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lift them out like this. And then we're going to put a strainer in, just like that. Just set them in the strainer and let them drain for about no oh, five minutes or so. Then uh, once we're done that, we're going to actually transfer the uh, the wort that we have in this pot into our big. This is a five gallon brew pot, uh, and then we're going to top this up with to make the volume of the. Uh, wort to come to 2.5 gallons and then we're going to bring it to a rolling boil and then the first thing we're going to do once we're uh, we get it to the rolling boil is we're going to add in our first can of liquid malt extract and our corn sugar now the funny thing is here's here's something I didn't know that when you actually uh, boil liquid malt extract it darkens the color and because a New England IPA is is typically um, it's a lighter color We're not going to be adding the second liquid malt extract can to the boil until there's only 10 minutes left in the boil um, And also one thing about the liquid malt, malt extract that we're using it is an extra light Liquid malt extract that we're using for this brew All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead. You guys don't need to see that I'm gonna let this drain. I'm gonna transfer it into our brew pot and I'm going to get it up to 2.5 gallons and bring it to a boil and then we'll be back to show you the next step. Alright. Okay, we got it transferred now. I got it topped up to the 2.5 gallon mark and we're going to, it's boiling now, so we're going to actually add in our corn sugar that came with the uh, kit. So we're going to add that all in. Don't worry, I'll bring you guys in here to actually see this a little closer up once we get everything kind of going. So we got that in there. We're going to give that a stir. Because one thing you got to do is you got to constantly stir this when you're adding ingredients because uh, you don't want any of it to stick to the bottom and burn. Especially that malt extract that we're going to put in next because it uh, it's heavy obviously, right? It's uh, thick, so it hits the bottom of the pot right away. So we're going to dump that in and stir at the same time. All right, here we go. Now what I did is I took this can and I uh, put it in, a, uh, I took the label off and I soaked it in hot water in the sink. To loosen it up so here we go all right constantly stirring all right good stuff okay now you know what I'm gonna do guys I'm going to just keep putting a little bit of water, hot water in here like that I'm just gonna stir that around see just kind of go like this just helps to get the rest of it out and you don't have to get absolutely everything but you know the more the better right the more sugars the more booze it's the East Coast way all right there you go. You got pretty much all of it there, so. Oh, a little bit left in the bottom. Alright, that's good enough. Okay, now we're going to bring this to a full boil. And um, at the 10 minute mark, we're going to add our first hop addition. All right, I'll meet you guys there. Okay, it has been 55 oh minutes um, since we started this boil, and now it's time to add in our liquid malt extract and our next hop addition. And for our next hop addition, we are going to be doing two ounces of Columbus hops. All right, so I think what we'll do first is the liquid malt extract get in there and stir that up
You know, I'm not going to worry about putting water in here. I'm just going to scrape it all out like this. So that gets most of it, hey? See how much sticks on the sides, though? It's actually a really good idea to really go through and get this all out because there's quite a bit of sugars and stuff left in here if you don't do that. There's a little bit left in the bottom. You know what we'll do? We'll do a little bit of water in there. You be careful you don't burn yourself doing this. Yeah, that should do it. All right, we'll stir that up really good. And then, last thing to do is add in that's one ounce and two ounces of Columbus hops. We're going to boil this for 10 more minutes. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to cool it down to 180 degrees. So I'm going to run some cold water in the sink. We're going to dump this or put this whole pot in the sink, cool it down to 180 degrees, and then we're going to do our Whirlpool hop addition. So we're going to add four more hops, four more ounces of hops, sorry. Uh, at 180 degrees and let them steep for about 20 minutes. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm just going to boil this for 10 minutes. All right, guys, to cool this down, we're going to put it in some ice cold water. Just like this. All right, now I am going to put a little bit of ice we got a bag of ice here. We're going to use most of this to cool down our wort when we're actually ready to actually put it in the fermenter, but I'm going to add a little bit in here. Helps out, you know. Cooling her down a little quicker. Throw the rest of that in the freezer for now. Yeah. All right, so we got ourselves a uh, homebrew pilsner that I did. Check out the channel for that one. It's really amazing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get our temperature in check. I'm going to start cooling this down. We want to bring her down to 180 degrees so we can do our Whirlpool Hop Edition. Now, what a Whirlpool Hop Edition is, yeah, here I am. Um, so what a Whirlpool hop addition is, is you just basically, you're just stirring like this at 180 degrees and you're just adding in your hops and you stir them in like this and then you let them steep for like 20 minutes. That's what we're going to do. But we need to get our temperature down. I'm using a electronic thermometer right now. They seem to be a little bit more accurate. Now we're getting close to being down to the 180. You know what? Boom, we're there. Okay, so we're going to pull this out, put her back on the stove, and then do our whirlpool. Be right back. Okay, guys, we've got two ounces of Centennial and two ounces of Cascade hops that we're going to be adding in for our whirlpool hop edition. Okay, so I'm just opening those up right now. Mmm, these smell amazing. Sure there's a lot of hops in this New England IPA. You know, I've had some New England IPAs from some craft breweries, and man, they are amazing. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to start a whirlpool like this, and just start dropping the hops in. There you go, that's one ounce of Cascade. Two ounces of Cascade. Oh, there's a little bit left in there. Get out of there, you pellet. There we go. Okay, we got some Centennial. There we go. And last but not least, another Centennial. Okay, we're going to whirl it up 
Now we're gonna let these steep for 20 minutes at 180 degrees. All right. Okay guys, we've gone ahead and let those last bit of hops. Yeah, here I am, bud. Uh, we let those, uh, I got some of this too. All right, so we let those hops steep for 20 minutes. So now it's time to cool down our wort to 70 degrees. So what are we doing? Just like baseball, we're making an ice bath. All right. And in she goes. Okay, so we'll monitor, I'm gonna monitor the temperature of this uh, until it gets to 70 degrees. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer it into our fermenting bucket and uh, we're gonna top it up with water. Now you probably noticed when I first was getting started there, there's a, there was a five gallon uh, jug of uh, bottled water on the counter there. This is the first time I've ever used bottled water. I always use my tap water and you know what? Tap water is just fine. But I really wanted a clean brew for this, this New England IPA. So I didn't want any off flavors or anything like that. I'm not saying that my, my tap water or your tap water is gonna give you off flavors, but I just didn't want to chance it, so I, I bought the the five gallons of uh, bottled water, and we're going to use that to top up the fermenter. So, anyways, so uh, we'll be back to show you that here once I get this down to 70 degrees. All right, my friends. She's cooled down to 70 degrees, so now it's time to put it in the fermenter. Now, handy thing to have, one of these big... Um, strainers it's got it's a very uh, tight strainer so that's going to catch a lot of the sediment that was left over from the the boil we're going to pour it through here so that we don't have all that sediment in our beer and yeah that's what we're going to do so i'm going to go get the brew and we're going to put it in there okay now i uh, remember the handy dandy uh, star sand sprayer that's what i did i sprayed this thing down we're ready to go Here we go, folks. Now you have to take this slow sometimes because the uh, the sediment can build up in that that strainer real quick. See that? Well, I guess. Well, yeah, you kind of can. So we're gonna hold off for a minute. We're gonna let that strain through, just like that. This kind of this process actually takes quite a bit of time, so I'm going to actually uh, I'm I'm not going to subject you guys to the whole process of this, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this all drains through, and then we're going to pour more in, drain it through, and then we'll have we'll come back to show you guys what the next step is. All right, cool. Okay, guys, I know my filming is going to kind of sketch on this one a little bit just because of the angles and stuff like that. So uh, usually I'm down in the mini brewery and that's where we do all our stuff so it's really easy to film. Anyways, I have topped it up with the bottled water. We're at the 23 liter mark in the fermenter here. So we're going to take a hydrometer reading and then we're going to pitch our yeast. So let's do that. Alright, see where this comes out at. I'm just going to let that settle down. While we're letting that settle down, I'm just going to pitch the yeast. So. Pretty straightforward stuff. The only thing I'm gonna do first, guys, I'm gonna give it a really good stir. I'm gonna get some oxygen going on in the uh, in there because the, I know the yeast like that. So, you know, if I had somebody to help me film, that'd be cool, but I don't, so. So we're just gonna give that a good stir. Just get a really good stir. It smells amazing. Woo! It's gonna be good. All right. I think our temperatures are okay. I have a temperature gauge on the uh, on the uh, the side here of the fermenter, and uh, we're sitting at 72 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and pitch our yeast. 
And we're gonna actually be using a Safel SO4, which is a dry ale yeast. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and cut that open. Boom. Mm, it smells amazing. Get that in here. Yeah, I know you can't see it. Sorry. And uh, we're going to stir that up. We're going to stir it up. Just gently stir, though. Just a gentle stir. And that's it, boys and girls. For that part, anyway. All right. Let's see what we came in at here. We are at... One o five. Let me see here. One o one o five seven. There you go. All right, that's part one, guys. We'll be back to do the dry hopping, the bottling, and the taste test. Until next time. Cheers. All right, my friends. It has been seven days. Seven days. We've had this New England IPA. Uh, fermenting in our primary fermentation here so now it's time to transfer it into our carboy and then in the carboy we're gonna do our dry hopping of the last two ounces of hops so um, yeah we're gonna go ahead and do that so I sanitized my hose sanitized my carboy with uh, star sand we're ready to go all right so all we have to do now is just open up the tap and let her rip. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and let this transfer into here until it's filled up. And then we're gonna dry hop this and put our airlock on. So there, we're just gonna, I'm not gonna film like the whole time that it's filling up because it takes a little bit of time, so. All right. Okay guys, we got it transferred in here into our carboy, so we're ready to dry hop. And so what we've got left over for hops is two ounces of Chinook hops. And you know what, guys? I tasted this just to see what it tasted like. And uh, I mean, obviously it was flat and it's not done, you know, fermenting and all that fun stuff. But it tasted awesome. So, oh, man, I'm telling you guys, Chinook hops are amazing. So we're going to try and get these in here without making a mess. So there you go. That's one. Oh, got a little little hot pellet still stuck in here. Come on, get out. Nah, he's not coming out, whatever. One hot pellet's not gonna make much of a difference, right? Okay. Get this guy in here. Gotta smell him. Come on. Get in there. Got a little clump in here. There we go. There we go. That's it. And now we're going to put our airlock in. Now what I've done here, you know a lot of times they say put water in there or vodka. I just put star sand in there. Boom. You're good to go. Make sure she's nice and secure. And you're good to go. All right, guys, we're gonna let this go for another seven days, and then we're gonna bottle it up and give it a try. Cheers. Oh, hold on. Let's give you a proper cheers. Cheers. Hey guys, what's going on? We are back, and I have to say, it's been over three months since I bottled this yeah I know so I got busy you know what Christmas came stuff came up and you know what I just didn't get around to actually filming the tasting so I'm back to do that for you guys um, <clears throat> so it's definitely conditioned it's definitely bottle conditioned this one's been in the fridge for about a month now so it's two months bottle condition 
one month in the fridge. Now you don't need to do that, but you know, it just turned out to be that way. No big deal. But you know what? It's gonna taste amazing, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Cause that's some good conditioning. Now, a couple things. It came in at around 4.7%. Now that's quite a bit lower than what I expected. Um, it was supposed to be into the mid fives, 5.5, 5.6, I think. I mean, it's been a while, you guys. But anyways, I'm kind of trying to figure out what went wrong. And I think the only thing I could think of is that I strained the hops. You remember when I poured into the, uh, into the fermenter that I strained? Now, the instruction said to, you know, pour it in gently to leave the sediment behind. So, I mean, I've seen lots of brew videos. I've done some brewing before. And a lot of times the instructions call for straining it, right? So I did that. Now, maybe, I mean, I'm not a professional brewer, but maybe what happened was the, um, maybe the hops like, you know, soaked up some of the, the malt extract, some of the sugars, I don't know. Anyways, it came out at 4.7%. That's gonna be fine. It's more of a session New England IPA. So, you know what? Let's take it for a spin and see what happens. It's ready to go. All right. I don't think there was anything else I wanted to say about it. I don't know. I always screw these caps on way too tight. Oh boy. There we go. She kind of fizzed at me a bit there. It's not foaming over, so we're good. Got the good old mason jar. It's cleaned out, ready to go. Let's give it a pour. Looks like it'll have good carbonation. All right, here we go. How's she doing? All right, wow. Okay, so now that is an amazing color. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Yeah. Now that's exactly what a New England IPA should look like, hazy. It's a hazy IPA. I mean, it's not crazy. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty clear, but it's got that nice haze to it that it should have for a New England IPA. Decent head. Oh, you guys, that is amazing smell. The aroma, the sit, I mean, it's a burst of citrus. Just like a New England IPA should be. All right, man. Cheers. Let's take it for a spin and see what happens. That's good. That's really good. Like, honestly, that's like, go to my you know, local pub, uh, craft brewery, off the tap, New England IPA. That's it. Hit it on the head. It's got that upfront citrus um, aroma and taste. And then it finishes off with that nice, just subtle bitterness. There is one thing though, one thing. Hold on. It's a little light in body. Like it's um, it's lacking a little bit of body, a little bit of backbone. Um, and that could be due to, like I said, straining. Um, I think if I were to do it again, I might add a little bit more malt extract, even a spray malt, like a, uh, a dry malt extract or even a can of, uh, that would bump it up quite a bit. Uh, a can of malt extract, I think, just to give it a little bit more body, just a light, a very, uh, a very light malt extract. But wow, you would never know, never know that that is a homebrew. Now, I don't know if that was because of condition for so long, but wow, that is good. So, the adventure of the Brewer's Best New England IPA comes to a close with a successful, in my mind, a successful, yeah, it's a little low on the alcohol, it's 4.7%, whatever. Um, I'd say it's a successful brew. Would I do this one again? Absolutely, I would do this one again. 
But here's the thing, you guys. That took me, you know, half a day to brew doing the partial extract, you know, so, you know, the, uh, the grains and then the, uh, the uh, malt extract. Um, when I brewed just from the cans, I turned up with some great, great beer just doing the, you know, the, the hop to malt extract. Um, and those take me honestly front to back to brew it like half an hour, 45 minutes, you know? Um, so I don't do as many of these because they take a lot of time and a full grain brew. It takes, it's a day, basically. You might as well say it's a day. So would I do this again? Yeah, but you got to have the time. So, all right. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like all that crazy shit, you know, anyways, cheers.